Hi, welcome to back to Pia Tech Talk. In this episode, we are going to tag along onto external debuggers. So if you have, for instance, an ST or any other manufacturer's uh, development board, like this is a discovery board from ST, you have always an ST link on board that you can use. Just connect your USB to it. Or if you have like this one, a nuclear board, a more simple board, you also have an ST-Link. If you, for instance, take this discovery board for the U595, you have on the back side, hard to see, but there is a 10-pin debugger connector. And to connect your uh, Sega J-Link to that one, you need a small cable. So then you buy your Sega J-Link and you have a cable like this. And that is actually this cable then that is connected to that board. But if you have a board like this one, it doesn't have that. It has a, a pin header that you can connect to. But how do you do then? That is what I'm going to look into and having my J-Link connecting to my nuclear board. So tag along. Here we have the uh, block diagram schematics on the STM32C0 nuclear board. And in the very top we see the USB micro B connector where you have a connection to your PC. And beneath that there is the big block that said an embedded ST link. That is the ST link that is embedded on the development board. But just beneath that you have an SVD and that is the SW3 connector that we are going to tag on our, our uh, uh, J-Link connector to. So if we open the schematics and we zoom into the CN3 connector, uh, we see the six pin header that is the SVD interface for the board. So if we cut out the part from the SCN3, uh, the SVD connector, the six pin header and uh, also the table from the manual, we can see that if we take a look at pin number one, it says VDD target, VDD from the application. And if we look into the schematics, we can see that that pin is actually with a 10K resistor to ground. And uh, for the J-Link to work, we need to have the target VDD target. So we need to use that pin uh, from, an, uh, from another header, which we will look into. So here on the board we can see the Nucleo C031C6 where I put a, a orange cable on the 3.3 volt uh, pin uh, which we th will then uh, use instead of the pin 1 on the SCN3 connector. And I also put an, a cable here on the CN3 where the white is pin 1 which we will then not use. We will use the orange pin instead of the, of the white. Also to notice that these two headers or these two uh, jumpers, they should be remaining as they were prior. So they are to be shorted, both of them. So now we have connected the nuclear board, but we also need to connect it to the other end, uh, our Sega uh, debugger. So we need to go to this URL, which I will also put in the link. And it says here connected to STM32 nuclear boards. And uh, it also says here that we need to have uh, all the pins connected to our own. Any pin, uh, VDD pin, needs to go to pin 1 for VRF. And that is the orange cable which I spoke about. And if we go to this page, we can also see uh, which pin pins are on, on the Sega J-Link. So we see here the bottom row is more or less all grounds. So, uh, and uh, pin 2 is not connected. So that is the pin 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and so forth. So there is two pictures of uh, my connections uh, to the board and I realize now that I have uh, chosen the for pin 1 the 3.3 volt orange cable 
uh, a bit unlucky because there is a yellow cable also that is very hard to distinguish in the colors. But the, the, the jumper wire that is between the red and the green wire is a yellow one. And the cable uh, further to the right is the orange cable which I'm speaking about. And that is to the 3.3 volt. And you can also see that I'm not using the white cable here that is uh, on the pin 1. So this is the final connection when we have now successfully connected the nuclear board to our Sega J-Link uh, with all the wires connected. And uh, also you need to have power to the board and uh, also a USB connable to the J-Link. Next step we need to go to the Sega website to download the software. So we go to this web page. I will, as usual, put the link in the description uh, where you have the JLink JTrace downloads and you have JLink software and document documentation pack. And you choose the latest version and uh, which operating systems that you use. I have already done this, but you use the 64 bit installer and install it. Common good practice after you have installed some. Uh, software is to make a reboot and um, after that we make a project just to see a blink if we can have the nuclear uh, board uh, be connected to the J-Link interface that we just connected. So we go with the debug, debug configurations, we hit the new and the debugger and it says here ST-Link. We change that now to J-Link instead. Apply and debug. So here we see the board and uh, I then hit uh, run on the debugger so we can see that the Sega is starting blinking and uh, there is a small LED green blinking there as well. So, now we have learned how to connect our Sega J-Link to a nuclear board. And if you learned something, please give the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider to subscribe as well. It's uh, really appreciated. And hope to see you next in the coming videos. Stay tuned. Bye.